Are you serious this morning? Are you serious today? Are you serious tonight? Whatever time it is <clears throat> that you're watching this YouTube video, we need to understand things are getting very serious in these last in these very last days. As a matter of fact, now the last two days I've talked about Revelation. Uh, we've talked about in Revelation six and Revelation seven. We talked about the breaking of the sixth seal. We talked about the recognition of the saints in between the sixth and seventh seal, and now the breaking of the seventh seal. Now, if you go with me to Revelation chapter 8, I'd like to read from the scriptures about the breaking of the seventh seal. The Bible says, And when he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. So he breaks the seventh seal, and there's silence. And what appears to be silence, it, it, John, who's receiving this revelation from the Lord, it, to him in this vision, it's as if there's silence for about a half hour. So you have to understand when you're getting an open vision, um, you know, you're perceiving things. Not only do you see things in open vision, but you have perception, spiritual perception of things that are happening around you. A lot of times when I'm talking to people who've had a dream or vision, and they start telling me a dream, I'll, I'll jump right in and say, did you see this? How did you feel? What was your surroundings? Where were you standing? Because uh, a lot of that is part of the perception or understanding of the revelation you're receiving. So this is very important that John says this. He does not say anything like this in the breaking of any of the first six seals. But when this seventh seal breaks, there was silence in heaven about the space of a half hour. There is a hesitation, a, re a realization of what's about to happen. And, and then he says, and I saw the seven angels which stood before God and to them were given seven trumpets. And another angel came out and stood at the altar having a golden censer. And there was given unto him much incense that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. Now, in the tabernacle, Moses' tabernacle and Solomon's temple, there's a golden altar in the holies. So you have the outer court uh, where the brazen altar is and where the, and where the brass laver is, where you wash and then as you go into the holies, there is the uh, menorah, the golden menorah. There is the golden shoe bread table. And there is the golden altar that's filled with incense. And that's where the prayers go up before God. So in heaven, there's a replica of the temple that God built on earth that is in heaven. And John is seeing a worshiping going on at that golden altar. It's it's. It's quite extraordinary. And even when you think about the father of John the Baptist, the priest, Zacharias, he was, you know, back in those days, if you were a priest, there would be one time in your lifetime you would be assigned to go in and pray at the golden altar. You would get one, there'd be one time you would ever get to do it. And the one time, finally, uh, Zacharias was summoned and told this was his day. He goes into the golden altar and goes to pray, and he has an open vision and at that vision he sees an angel that stands next to him and uh, begins to tell him that his wife is going to have a baby and his name will be John. Now Zacharias starts to question that and the angel tells him says no his name will be John and you will not speak until that baby is born. And because simply because he questioned just what he was actually envisioning and receiving from God. And the reason that the baby had to be named John is because usually what a priest would do, they would always name their sons after them. Okay, firstborn son, you'd name him after yourself. And then he would also grow up to be a priest. And so by calling his name John, he's breaking all the traditions. But that's what God wanted because John the Baptist was going to be a tradition breaker. All right. He was not going to come up to the Levitical priesthood. Even though he was from the tribe of Levi, he wasn't coming up as a Levitical priest. He was going to be the, the voice uh, out, crying out of the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord and make his path straight. 
Okay? I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Prepare ye the way of the, of the Lord. Make his path straight. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Wearing camel's hair and a leather girdle. Now, uh, r- tradition is, I don't know why I'm getting on this, but I guess I should. Tradition is, Jewish tradition is that the golden, uh, the leather, excuse me, the leather girdle that John wore was the same leather girdle wore by the prophet Elijah who uh, had once wore it and that uh, it was stored in the golden altar and that John would be wearing it when he came out of the wilderness. Now that's legend and that's not, I can't find that scripturally, but it doesn't mean it didn't happen. Okay. That's Jewish legend. Well, anyway, there's a lot that uh, takes place here, but we have silence in heaven. We see some prayers going up and the angel took the censer and filled it with fire uh, of the altar and cast it into the earth. And there were voices and thunderings and lightnings and an earthquake. Now, remember, whatever is going on in the spiritual world manifests in the physical. And here you go again with it happening again. The seven angels, which had the seven trumpets, prepared themselves to sound and were getting ready to have a physical manifestation that is going to be incredible in the breaking of of the seventh seal. And I'll probably share that with you uh, in the next time tomorrow in the next video on on this very subject uh, on the breaking of the seventh seal. God bless all of you. Have a great day today. It's going to be a powerful day. We're going to have a great broadcast. We've had a powerful week all week. Monday, we had Avi Lipkin. Tuesday, we had Mike from around the world. Wednesday, we had Aaron Judke, Judke who went to find Noah's Ark and is in that movie, Finding Noah. Yesterday, we had Gil Brazard. And today, we're going to open up the phone lines and receive and hear from you. And then Sunday night, Russ Dizdar will be our guest and the Black Awakening, the rise of the Antichrist and the legion of demons that are coming with him. Are you saved? Are you serious? Give your life to Jesus Christ. I'll see you today at 12 noon Eastern at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com.